Florida's housing market is getting hit by a rapid downturn right now. The inventory levels are exploding. The price cut levels are exploding, meaning that this could be the beginning of the long-awaited housing crash in Florida. With home prices across the state as much as 30% overvalued at today's prices, meaning that there is significant downside if this crash plays out like I expect it to. You need to be very, very careful because we are likely at an inflection point right now. An inflection point where we've seen the buyer demand collapse and drop off, while at the same time, lots of people are now selling out of the Florida market, causing inventory and new listings to spike. With inventory across the Florida housing market growing by a massive 57%, over the last year, folks. And just to give you some perspective of how that compares to other states in America, Florida is number one by far in terms of inventory growth. And it's that inventory that so many of us have been waiting for in Florida's housing market, especially in metros like Tampa, Orlando, Miami. I'm gonna get into all the different cities in Florida's housing market in this video so you guys as buyers and investors can have a clear insight into what's going on. But before I do, I wanna issue a warning. A warning that I'm seeing lots of people actually like disregard what's going on in Florida's housing market right now. Like the data I'm about to show you is very severe and indicates a huge flip in the market. But because it's taken, let's just say, a long time to get to this point, you know, I've been calling for a Florida housing downturn for the last 18 to 24 months. You know, a lot of people, you know, they started tuning that out. They say to themselves like, oh, the prices look so high, they're never going to go down. But I fear that a lot of the people who are saying that are going to end up catching a falling knife and buy at the exact wrong time. So I want you guys to look at this graph. It looks at the for sale inventory on the Florida housing market. And you can see how the for sale inventory collapsed from pre-pandemic levels of around 130,000 down to only 35,000 homes on the market in March 2022. Now, it was these very low inventory levels that caused the home values to spike by as much as 40 to 50% in just a couple years. It was that low inventory. But now we have two years in a row where the inventory is just going up and going up like a hockey stick, everyone. If we look at the month by month analysis on Reventure app, the inventory just continues to surge. And that's occurring. That inventory spike is occurring right now as we speak in a housing market that's still 30% overvalued, where things have just gotten so expensive. I mean, ask yourself the question, why is inventory spiking in Florida right now? Why are fewer people moving there to buy a house and more people selling? Well, I mean, it's just gotten so ridiculous to own a house in Florida. People can't afford it. Like if we go down to Southeast Florida in Miami, everyone, take a look at how crazy some of these prices are. You can see that a 3,600 square foot house costs 1.4 million with a monthly payment that would run you 8,400 a month which is 100,000 a year. For a house that Zillow thought was worth 650,000 right when the pandemic started. So the value of this house has basically doubled the last four years. Although what do you notice now? Uh-oh, the prices are starting to go down a little bit. And one really big reason why prices are now starting to drop in certain parts of Florida and why the inventory is spiking is because we're also seeing a sell-off from Airbnb investors, everyone. This is kind of like the silent sell-off, the silent crash, where a lot of people who bought Airbnb properties over the last two to three years are now realizing that that wasn't such a good idea. And they're starting to lose money on these Airbnbs. Like they can't actually even cover their costs, let alone cover their mortgage interest. And so some of these people are saying, well, wow, wow I need to sell. I got in over my head, but now they're trying to sell and they're realizing that they can't get the same price that they bought the property for. And to see an example of this, um, I went on Bigger Pockets, which is a real estate blog, and I found this post from someone in Los Angeles who bought an Airbnb property in Orlando. And the title of this post is Urgent Help Needed Navigating Investment Decisions for My Orlando Property. I want you guys to take a look at what he had to say, because this is kind of the nightmare scenario that I've been warning you guys about the last one to two years and that now unfortunately a lot of people are going through. He says, hey everyone, I ventured into Airbnb in Orlando with a five bed, three bath place aimed at Disney goers. Last year I ended 12,000 short, meaning lost $12,000. It wasn't about lack of bookings, but rather that the rates were simply lower than my initial projections. Come November, I shifted gears toward long-term rentals. 
He got some interest, but offers were either too low or applicants didn't qualify. He tried opting for a lower rental price, but that would mean a yearly loss of six to $8,000, which oddly seems more appealing than continuing with the Airbnb. As a result of these losses, he's now listed the property for sale. At the asking price, he just about covered the mortgage, meaning that if he put any equity in, that's already gone. But not only that, realtors believe it's worth 25,000 less than my asking price, which means I'd still be 25,000 short post sale. It's a tough call for a newbie investor like me. What do you think? And ultimately folks, I don't wanna like make light or you know make fun of anyone. I think that is an unfortunate situation that that investor is in. And you know I, I do feel bad for people who are in that situation. I think the thing that scares me is that there's lots of people likely in that situation. Um, there's hundreds of thousands at minimum of people who bought Airbnb properties in cities they don't live in over the last three or four years and who are now facing the harsh reality that that business model isn't maybe all it was cracked up to be and that they're going to have to start taking some losses. And the way to tell which areas in Florida are going to feel this downturn most is to look at two data points, everyone. Two data points are going to tell you most of what you need to know if you're a home buyer in Florida or looking to move to Florida. And that number one data point is the inventory surplus. How many more homes are currently listed on the market than normal? Mixed with the second data point, which is the overvaluation rate. The more overvalued the prices are in your city or zip code, the greater the likelihood that prices fall over the long term. And so if you combine skyrocketing inventory with, over, with an overvalued housing market, that increases the risk that prices drop. And if we zoom in in Florida and look at all the different counties, we're looking at the inventory surplus and deficit. I want you to pay attention to these counties in dark red. Because these are the ones where inventory has spiked the most. And what sticks out immediately is we have Osceola County, which is south of Orlando, and then Polk County, which is where Lakeland is, both are at an inventory surplus of 60 to 66%. And let me show you guys what that looks like. For instance, in Polk County, there's now 3,900 homes on the market for sale, when only two years ago, there was 900 homes on the market for sale. So in two years, inventory has increased about 400% and is now 66% above the long-term average of 2,500. So Polk County is now an oversupplied housing market, which is why the Reventure app home price forecast score says that prices have an increasing likelihood of dropping over the next 12 months. Now, at the same time, Osceola County is going through something similar where the inventory of listings for sales increased from 545 two years ago to 3,100 today. We can see that there's no historical precedent, uh, at least in the last 10 years, for having inventory this high in Osceola County, suggesting that something big has shifted in the market and the prices will drop. And folks, if I haven't gotten to your area in Florida yet, just stick with me. Uh, I'm gonna try to cover as many markets as I can in this video one by one. We can see in Pinellas County, which covers St. Petersburg and Clearwater, inventory is up 51% from normal. We can see we're now up to 5,900 homes on the market when we only had 1,100 homes on the market two years ago. So again, I want you to think about this, everyone. Lots of people's expectations who are buyers in St. Petersburg or Clearwater you know, they were set two years ago when there was only 1,100 homes on the market for sale. That's what caused the prices to go up. Now there's 5,900 homes on the market for sale, the highest level that we've seen in March going back eight years. And so if you're a buyer in St. Petersburg or Clearwater, you gotta know that. And you gotta know that the market there has shifted. I actually know someone who is potentially looking at buying in St. Petersburg. And you know, he, he talked to some of the local realtors there who are still giving like this super rosy perspective on the market and saying like, yeah, now's the time to buy. That's a difficult argument to justify with such a rapid surge in inventory. And we can see if we zoom out that like the biggest inventory surge is definitely happened like in the central part of the state to the West Coast. Like that's where we see the most red on this map. Whereas actually if we go up to like the Northern part of the state, you know, in Tallahassee and some of these other counties near the border of Georgia, inventory is actually down here. So inventory is down in Tallahassee and some of these other markets, indicating that like we are not seeing the same downturn play out here. There still is a theoretical shortage or we might have more balanced inventory levels. Wouldn't expect prices to drop as much in Tallahassee as I would maybe in Pensacola, like Santa Rosa County, inventory is up 47%. And Bay County and Panama City, inventory is up 59% from normal. And so, you know, in these areas in red, again, it means that there's a surplus of homes for sale more likely to see prices drop, and these areas more translucent or blue, there isn't as much of a surplus and maybe even a shortage. Now, before getting into some more cities, I still gotta cover Miami, still gotta cover Jacksonville, some others. 
I want to actually talk about maybe a more optimistic take on the Florida housing market in the long run, because I don't want to come off as too bearish. Like I do think Florida in the long term is a good place to own, potentially over 10 years. Uh, I think if you were to buy in Florida today, maybe over 10 years, you could see some appreciation. And I think ultimately, like it's important to understand what your investment horizon is or your home buying time horizon. Like if you're buying with the idea that you're going to sell in three years or five years in Florida right now, like that's a risky proposition because you could be catching a falling knife. But rather, like if you have a truly long term perspective and, you know, you're looking at the data on the fact that Florida is like the number one migration market in America, one of the number one population growth markets, you can say to yourself, like, I could potentially ride out whatever downturn and wait for prices to go back up. And yeah, to be clear, everyone, Florida is a migration and population growth powerhouse. If we look at this data on Reventure app in terms of migration, the states with the most migration, where are people moving to across America? They're moving to these areas in red. And ultimately, it's not that surprising. It's the Southeast, it's Texas, it's Florida. And in Florida, in 2023, a net 373,000 people moved to the state. You can see that was down by about 15% from last year, but was still one of the highest levels on record. So there still are people moving to Florida and quite a, a lot of people. With Florida's migration uh, being number one in America, Texas is the only other state that comes close with North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia like way behind. And so that's good, everyone. Like Florida is always going to add people. However, it's important to understand the risks to actually those super high levels of migration, because it's those super high levels of migration that attracted all the Airbnb investors, that attracted all the hedge fund home buyers, that attracted all the home builders to Florida. And so that super high migration attracted like all of the, the speculative activity in capital in the housing market to Florida. And it's that speculative activity in capital that ultimately creates bigger downside during the bust. Because if we take a look at the number of building permits in Florida, everyone, these are building permits pulled over the last 12 months for homes and multifamily and condo, we can see that Florida pulled permits for 189,000 homes and apartments, which is one of the highest permitting levels on record still, way above what it was before the pandemic. So there's pulling permits and these permits are going to result in completed housing units over the next two years still. So we still have lots of backlog of building in Florida. But I want to take you guys back to the mid 2000s. Notice in the mid 2000s, we had a similar run up in building permits peaking in 2006. And then notice how there was a crash. There was a huge crash in Florida during the last bubble during the last bust. And it was during this crash that like, you know, the builders ended up delivering all these building permits you know, at exactly the wrong time when the demand went down, it was when these investors in Florida, you know, started to sell. Like if you take a look at a market like Orlando, notice how the investor purchases peaked in late 2005 in the last cycle in Orlando. And then the investor purchases literally plummeted. The investor purchases went down 80% in the last cycle. And notice how the investor purchases plummeting led the crash. The investor purchases started plummeting about two years before the crash really happened, what do we notice? Something similar playing out now. We had the big surge in investor purchases in Orlando. Now that surge has collapsed down. So a lot of these investors know it's time to stop buying and get out. And so ultimately, how much do I think home prices are going to crash in Florida? I mean, that's the ultimate question, right? The ultimate prediction, because I think a lot of you guys, you know, you want to hear and you want to know. Because if you're a buyer and investor, the, like the worst case scenario is buying a property near the peak of a bubble and then getting wiped out, right? I mean, that happened to so many people in Florida back in 2008, 2007. So many people got wiped out because they bought at the wrong time. And, you know, ultimately, I want to be careful about like trying to time the market. You know, I probably was a little early on my Florida housing bubble call. You know, maybe there was some appreciation that occurred even after I made the call. But overall... You know, you just got to be really cognizant of how overvalued home prices are in your city. It's that overvaluation, which I talked about before, which we're going to dig into right now. The more overvalued prices are relative to their long-term norms, the bigger potential there is for a downturn. And we talked about before, home prices in Florida across the state are 29% overvalued. With a typical home value of 392000 Reventure app calculations show that the fair home value is probably closer to 302000 based on what the underlying incomes are. And we can see that like lots of Florida just in general is overvalued. Like Tampa St. Pete's 33% overvalued. Orlando's 28% overvalued. Lakeland's 
36% overvalued. Punta Gorda is 35% overvalued. The Miami Metro is 34% overvalued. And so we just have lots of overvaluation. And like, if we look at Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, what do we notice is that prices are like back in the last bubble in 06, 07, they peaked at 32% overvalued, right? You can see that on the label here on the overvaluation graph. Then they crashed and prices actually became undervalued by 2012 and actually remained undervalued through 2017. But now, concerningly, we're back to a situation where prices are 34% overvalued. Typical home value in the Miami Metro, including condos, of 478,000. Fair home value relative to income of 357,000. And so what is this saying, everyone? If you're in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or any other part of Florida, it's saying that there's downside. And to be clear, it's not saying that like prices will imminently crash 34%. It's saying that this market is 34% overvalued compared to its norms over the last 20 years. Because over the last 20 years, the average home value to income ratio in Miami was 4.9. Home prices traded for 4.9 times median income. And you can see in February 2020, this market was almost like perfectly valued right before the pandemic. It was fairly valued. Now the home value to income ratio is 6.5. And what's concerning about this is that's even higher than it was in 07 before prices in Miami crashed 50%. And if you're a home buyer investor in Florida who wants to look at this data in more detail and make a more educated decision for yourself, you can do that. I would recommend you head to www.reventure.app, do this right now, and type in the city that you're in in Florida. And start looking at this data for your zip code and neighborhood. Like if you're looking at buying in, in, in one of these zip codes, you gotta understand what the inventory surplus is. If the inventory surplus is higher, like on the west side of Jacksonville, more likely the prices drop. Whereas if it's lower, like in the east side of Jacksonville, less likely prices drop. You also have to understand those overvaluation rates because the heavier the overvaluation is, the more risk there is in the long term to that housing market declining, as well as the Reventure app home price forecast score, which tells you if the market is a seller's market or a buyer's market, and if uh, prices are more likely, based off the current data, to go up or down. And to access that data, become a premium member on Reventure app. The cost is $39 a month. Ultimately, a, a small price to pay for more knowledge and information about your home buying decision. Um, you really don't want to be buying in Florida right now without consulting the data. So head to www.reventure.app right now and look at what the inventory surplus is for your zip code, as well as the overvaluation rate and how that has changed over time, because that will help you understand a lot.